I've been playing RuneScape since I was a kid, and since then, I've completed a lot of challenges and accomplished a lot of goals. But one thing I've never achieved was the Max Cape. After Group Iron Man, I have an account that is closer than I've ever been to maxing, so here is my journey to Max Cape. Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of me working toward a Max Cape. Before we get started, here are my stats. I currently have 11 out of the 23 skills maxed and 2,191 total level. As far as my bank goes, I've transferred everything I own back to this account after the 0GP to Twistabo series, and we're just under 6 billion bank now. Before we get started on any skilling, I want to mention this series won't just be me grinding full efficiency toward a max cape. If you watched me before, you probably noticed I like money making, and I don't want this series to be any different. So, with that being said, I want to see how much money I can make while maxing my remaining skills, and with what I have planned, I think I'm going to make a lot more money than you're probably imagining. But the first thing I want to do is grab full Dirox, as the first goal for the episode 1 is to achieve 99 defense. Now I want to achieve 99 defense through Nightmare Zone, which is technically a money sink, but I'll tie it into money making once we finish. The other two goals I have for this episode is 99 smithing and 2200 total level, that will put us over the halfway mark on the number 99s away from max and unlock the last total level world for us. I've only been doing Nightmare Zone for a little bit now, but it looks like we're getting around 120,000 XP an hour. But the reason I decided to record is actually you do get bones out here in Nightmare Zone. I kind of forgot about that. Even the Black Knight Titan gives big bones. So it'd probably be pretty beneficial for me to bring my Bone Crusher since I'll be here around 15 hours to get 99 defense. I shouldn't get a crazy amount of prayer XP, but it'll probably add up. And I have so many charges in my Bone Crusher anyway, it's probably worth it. Now that we have the Bone Crusher, I decided to add some other minions as well, specifically Bouncer. And it turns out Bouncer is a hell which makes sense so he drops vile ashes so i guess i have to get my ash sanctifier as well yeah it seems like i'm forgetting a few items nice there it is 99 defense from here at the nightmare zone glad to get that grime over with even though it was pretty afk and quite nice but 99 defense that means we now have 12 out of the 23 99s 11 more to go for the series for those of you wondering how I plan on tying defense into money making, you get points from Nightmare Zone and from those points I am going to buy herb boxes. Now I think you can only buy 15 per day, but since maxing is going to take me a lot of time, I decided to do defense first and I will plan on spending these points as I progress. Hopefully it doesn't take 75 days since it's like 100k points a day I have to spend on herb boxes, but I guess we'll see. And I guess now on to the next skill, which is going to be smithing. Before we get into smithing, I do want to show off the XP rates. Now, I did unfortunately forget to pause during one of my sessions, so the XP is a little bit off. But I do remember is around 110k XP an hour while actively playing, which means HP XP should be closer to 33k, maybe 34k. And I was getting around 1000 prayer XP with the Bone Crusher and the Ash Sanctifier. So nothing crazy, but it is good to just know what I was getting. Now getting into smithing, the first thing I want to go ahead and do is Blast Furnace. It's a very, very popular method and adamant bars are like 100k XP an hour and actually pretty decent profit. I think it's close to 800k to 1 mil an hour, depending on how fast you do them. And hopefully I do them at max efficiency. This is one buy limits worth, so I guess we'll see how much money and time it takes. Here's what I spent on all of that. Let's just see how long this takes. Oh, one thing I forgot, you do also need stamp pots for this method, and I did forget how expensive they are, so another 200k added. Not sure if I'm going to use all the stamina potions for all of these, but I'll definitely need a few. If you've never done Blast Furnace before, it's pretty simple. Throw some GP into the copper here, and then once you have some gold in your bank, if you have a coal bag, you can just fill it straight from the bank. If not, just throw an inventory coal, and then you throw it on this conveyor belt here. Once you have some coal on the conveyor belt, then you want to get some ore as well, so that way you can make the actual bars. And once you have all of the ore in, you're going to get 27 bars. You just take that and deposit it and make bars very, very quickly. Like I said, the XP an hour can get up to 100k if you're very efficient with this here. So let's see how well I can do. Finishing up with the smithing grind. And I was surprised I was actually managed to maintain 111k XP an hour. I thought the max would be like 100k XP an hour, but I'm very happy with that. Looks like it took me an hour and a half or just under an hour and a half to get through the full amount of 4,333 adamant bars. Now we can go ahead and sell those and see how much we made. I sold off all of the adamant bars from that session and it looks like it comes to just over 8 mil. So if we look at the history, it looks like the profit from all of that would be 4.1 plus 2.4 plus 206.7. So about 1.4 mil profit in about an hour and a half. I think that is like 1 mil profit, very close to 1 mil profit. Maybe if I sped up just like a slight bit as 1 mil profit. Honestly, not bad. 
I expected it to be closer to 700, 800K profit. So if I am actually making 1 mil an hour doing this method, that's great. I guess the only issue would be the buy limit. And I do think I have a way around that. Before I go into buy limit though, as you may have saw, I also decided to make another investment for this grind and that is the ring of endurance. It should actually help a lot in my grind because the ring of endurance has two effects. One is when it is loaded with stamina potions. If you drink one dose of stamina potion, it counts for two. So it'll last for four minutes instead of two. And the second effect is it's actually like another piece of grace when as long as you have 500 charges within the ring of endurance so that does mean i need to spend even more money on staminas as like a initial cost but it should pay for itself very soon well here's all these stamina pots that i need to charge the ring 2.7 mils a bit more than the initial cost that i was expecting i forgot how expensive stamina pots were even though i just purchased some Let's add a thousand charges to the ring and now those stamina pots are gone forever. Finishing up the adamant bars here with the new ring of endurance tech and I have to say I think it definitely has made a difference. I think I was getting around 110k xp an hour without it and with it I'm getting closer to 115k xp an hour which doesn't sound like a lot but I think even with max efficiency you can get closer to 120,000 xp an hour which means you can get this entire thing done in like an hour and 15 minutes if you're paying attention the entire time. So overall, not a bad upgrade for the grind. Just selling off all of the adamant bars again for it looks like around the same profit, 1.5 mil. Yeah, something like that. So not too, too bad. The only thing I have to worry about now is getting around the buy limit. As you can see, if I try to buy coal for even 100K, it won't let me buy because there is a buy limit on coal. So there is a way around it and it's actually pretty simple. I have my other account here and all I'm going to do is go ahead and trade him and then give him the money to buy the coal and adamant on his account. And since both adamant and coal are free to play items, I don't even need membership. So it's very, very nice. I can basically have infinite accounts as long as it has 10 quest points and I think 100 total level, you can free trade. There are the ores plus the money back. So very nice. And I can basically do this as many times as I have accounts to do this, which should be plenty of time for the four hour buy limit. There's 97 smithing from the blast furnace. I think I want to get one more level here and do a new method that I want to do from 98 to 99 smithing. However, like I said, that will take me 98 smithing to do it. So one more level here, I guess 1.1 million more XP at the blast furnace. The final bit of adamant ores, which should get me up to 98 smithing. We get to try the new method that I wanted to try. But first, let's see how much money we've made. After all that smithing training, we we're up to a 21.4 mil cash stack. However, I did have to spend like 28 mil to buy the Ring of Endurance and like 2.7 mil to charge the Ring of Endurance. As for profit, I believe I made 1.5 mil every time I bought a buy limits worth of adamant ore and coal. And I bought about 10 buy limits worth, so I guess we made 15 mil within that grind. And you saw the XP per hour, about 110, 120k of max efficiency. So not terrible, but let's move on to the next method. The next method we're going to try is pretty costly. As you can see, 21 mil and runite bars. Let's head over to an anvil. What I want to do from 98 to 99 smithing is actually make runite two-handed swords. Now, unfortunately, you do need 99 smithing to make rune two H's. So I can't actually make it right now. But fortunately for me, Dwarven Stouts are extremely cheap. So all I got to do is drink one of these. It'll boost your smithing level by one. And then I can make as many rune knight two h's as i'd like and if i ever need to drink another one like i said they're extremely cheap so it's basically no cost to boost rune two handers seem to be doing pretty well it looks like it's about 250k xp an hour when i'm paying attention so overall it's not too bad i guess the only bad thing is i do have to use a dwarven stout every i guess 1.5 minutes but it is what it is they're pretty cheap but off all the rune two h's i made from the rune knight bars and it looks like with this i made less than 100k bought for 21.395 sold for 21.470 after tax so yeah, not great, but it is like twice as fast, if not even faster than that. And you are still profiting while making smithing. Maybe I'll try instead of doing rune two H's, I could try rune plate legs since it is also three bars and they have the same alk value or maybe i can just try to get a better margin i think i'm gonna buy even more and then see what i can do with that I ended up selling all of the room plate legs and it does look like i got a better margin than what i was getting with the two h's as you can see here i sold the two h's for what looks like after tax 37 6 14 and this is the tax 37 8 14 so like an extra 200 gp and if you look at what I paid, 41.3 mil is what I paid for all the Runite bars. And it looks like I got 40.9 back from the plate legs and 700k back from the Rune 2Hs, which means I only profited like 300k this time so yeah this isn't as profitable as i thought but it is like double the xp from the other ones so if you're looking more for xp maybe you go for this but if you're looking for profit i still stick with bars for now after barely making any money with the runite items and having to do that annoying boost i decided to look into even more ways that i could possibly make money and it looks like adamant bars into adamant plate bodies is actually more xp and more gp per hour 
So yeah, let's give that a try. I bought basically 10,000 adamant bars minus one because I did have to price check the adamant bars. So yeah, let's see how much XP I'm gonna get per hour doing this and how much money I can possibly make. Finishing up the adamant plate bodies that we have and it looks like we were averaging about 280K XP an hour, which is not bad. Definitely better than I was getting like 240k with the Ruinite legs, but let's see what we can sell these for. Sold off all the adamant plate bodies and it looks like I got 18.9 mil and it looks like if we check out how much I bought all the adamant bars for, we're close to 18.7 mil. So it's definitely better XP. However, for money, it's pretty much the same. Maybe slightly worse, honestly. It seems like it's profit still, but it, you're just not getting as good as you were making the adamant bars himself. And since it's only 228k until I get 99 smith thing, I may as well just do two hours adamant bars, make a little bit more money. Definitely a bit slower doing it at Blast Furnace, but there it is, 99 smithing. That is the second 99 now of the episode. But I do have three goals for this episode, not only to get 99 defense, 99 smithing, but also 2,000 total level, so four more to go. The best thing about doing adamant bars is the profit, 11.2 mil there, and you can see how much I spent on it, it looks like that's 2.7 plus 6.7, 9.4 mil, and I got 11.2 back, so yeah, way better than what I was doing with like the adamant plate bodies and the ruined two ages, yeah, that's, that's not too great. The final goal for this video, 2200 total, I think I want to do just entirely with fletching, that'll get me up to 90 fletching, so no longer will my tears of gothics go into fletching, which is a terrible skill for it to go for a main account. But I also don't really have an idea of like a solo video for fletching, so I'll probably train that passively on the side with a decent bit of money making as fletching actually is a pretty profitable skill if you don't just do darts. What I decided to do for a fletching money maker is just a very simple method of stringing magic long bows. As you can see, they buy for 189 and the bow strings buy for 119 GP each. And then if we go and we just look up a magic longbow really quick, you can see here they're selling for 1.37 and the actual active traded price is 100 GP above that. So you're making like 200, maybe even 300 GP per string. So it's not actually too bad. A string and magic longbows is nowhere near the XP is hour of darts, but it is way, way more relaxed. Like if I just take out the longbows and the string here, you just do that, click once, and you're pretty much AFK for 10 to 15 seconds. And it's not like the XP is bad either. Like I said, not compared to darts, but 225k XP an hour, that's fine considering how little effort I have to put in here. You go and just make an inventory, go grab like a coffee or something and come back and your inventory is completed. Yeah, it's going to get a little bit less XP the more you AFK, but the fact it is AFKable and you don't have to focus on the screen and you are also making a decent amount of money while doing so, I'd say it's a pretty decent method. 87 fletching. 88 fletching. I finished fletching all the longbows and decided to sell them off and it looks like we have over 14 mil which is quite good considering if we check what we spent. We spent just basically 12 mil so two more profit per 10,000 bows I do. That's actually not too bad especially considering I'll probably have to do like 100,000 bows to get up to 99 fletching. So it's like 20 mil profit with fletching going to 99. Usually you lose quite a bit more money. 89 fletching. And here is the final fletching level I need, up to 90 fletching, which is also 2200 total level. That is pretty cool. Uh, this is the first time I've ever had an account that has 2200 total level. That means I can now hop to like the super, super sweaty worlds. I guess these worlds right here. Will it just immediately let me in? Yes, here it is, the 2200 total level world. This is where all the nerds hang out. I assume everyone here is going to be like level 126. I'm like the only level 124 here, but that is it. We have got 99 defense in this episode, 99 smithing, and 90 fletching to give us 2200 total level, which means we are now only 77 levels away from that max cape. And I sold off all of the magic longbows that I got from the 88 to 90 fletching grind, I believe it was. It looks like we got 10.5 mil, and on the bows and the bow strings, it looks like we spent just about 9.5 mil, so another 1 mil profit there. Now, originally I was going to track the GP earned throughout the series with the bank value in each episode, but as you'll see in the next episode, there is a huge fluctuation in prices, so I feel the best way to track money made throughout the series is just by adding the total that we've made throughout each moneymaker. From defense at Nightmare Zone, we made an undisclosed amount as we'll be opening up the herb boxes when we max. From smithing, we made a total of 18.5 mil in profit, mostly from the Blast Furnace, and from fletching, we made a total of 3 mil from the magic longbows, which brings our total profit from episode 1 up to 21.5 mil. 
a decent start, but it is just the start as I have some major money makers planned for the future episodes. That is going to be it for episode one of the maxing series. Here is where my stats are ending off at. In the next episode, I will be going for yet another 99 and potentially going to be going for the money maker that's going to make me the most money throughout this entire series. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Later.